So why is the album called Franklin? The album is called Franklin because John Franklin was probably the most famous of the Northwest Passage explorers. Okay, what's the uh, what's the Northwest Passage? Well, the Northwest Passage was a it was a kind of holy grail. They were looking for a trade route that went up round the north of Canada and got down into the Pacific because right. the trip under Cape Horn mm -hmm. was pretty treacherous. Mm -hmm. So they were hoping there would be a quick route over the north of Canada. Cook and various other people went looking for this mm -hmm. and kept hitting walls of ice, whichever way they went. So they kept going looking, which culminated in the Franklin expedition, which left in 1845 and ended in the absolute catastrophe. He disappeared. No one knew what had happened to him, and it was a big scandal of the time. Mm -hmm. How the British Navy could have been defeated by this at the right. height of the empire. Did everybody die? Everybody died. We think that's a catastrophe. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, although recently, I mean, since we started pulling this project together, both of the ships from his expedition, the Erebus and Terror, have been found. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, so it's brought it back so, into but, the public conscious. Sunk. Sunk at Sunk. the bottom of the sea. Yeah, probably dead then. We decided to do an album based on the Northwest Passage, and then it's a case of reading around as much background stuff as you can and seeing where it could be that songs might actually be cropping up. So, one of the places was from the onboard printing presses. They were iced in over the long winters, and one of the things they did would print newspapers on board the ships. They printed a newspaper called the North Georgia Gazette. Mm -hmm. That included many poems, mm -hmm. uh, some of the song lyrics. We've got Death of a Gull. The basic premise of the song is they're on board the ship. There's not really much going on. They do a bit of target practice, shoot the two parent seagulls and leave right. the two child seagulls. One of them <laughs> starves to death. Uh, and the other one moves into an observatory hut, which then burns down and the seagull burns to death in the observatory hut. That's a cheery tale. A cheery tale, but yeah. you can imagine if there's nothing going on and nothing's changing, <laughs> any tiny event becomes this major, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. major kind of thing. Some other ones which came from there are The Wild Wild Wanderer, which is a song about a dog called Carlo, who starts engaging with some wolves who mm -hmm. start hanging out near the ship. And Carlo eventually jumps off the ship and goes and joins the wolves. They speculate what happens to Carlo. Mm. Probably eaten, By the I should wolves, imagine. Like, yeah. And one of the other things, they came back and they try to financially exploit what had happened to them. And now George Back was on a couple of Franklin's earlier expeditions mm. overland to try and find the northern edge of Canada. Um, and he published this book called Canadian Airs and it supposedly is songs which he collected from the paddlers and they okay. worked for the fur trade, paddling furs and supplies up and down the rivers. And the songs that came from there were Reason's Voyage, mm -hmm. Song of Defeat and The Reindeer and the Ox. Mm. If you read the words of the songs, it's kind of clear they probably were not much to do with paddlers, but that almost makes them more interesting because they're London's take on what right. that would have been at the yeah. time. I guess Alouetta would be... Um... Well, Alouetta, they think it's probably a French-Canadian song, so that's kind of a song from there which has come back over here. And was there, was there any other sources? And one of the other songs we found was uh, it's a hymn called From Greenland's Icy right. Mountains. It's a missionary hymn of its day, and it's all to do with showing how the church was spreading its power into the far reaches right. of empire. So it's another bit of culture coming back. What about Lady Franklin? That's obviously the first track off the album that people would have heard. What's the story behind that one? So probably of all of the songs to do with the Northwest Passage and Franklin, uh, Lady Franklin is the most famous. In 1850s broadside, it's all to do with Lady Franklin, who at the time was going on this massive PR campaign to fundraise for the trips to look for Franklin. Mm -hmm. By that point, John Ray, who'd been up there um, looking for the Franklin trip, he'd met up with the Inuit when he was there and they'd described scenes of cannibalism. And this was a massive scandal at the time. They came back, the British Navy had been eating each other. London simply wasn't ready to believe that that could have been the case. I dreamed a dream 
which I thought was true. I suppose as a as a producer, you're kind of known for working more in a kind of arty rock world, I would say. I guess so, yeah. Um, so, you know, bands like Depeche Mode, Blur, uh, Elbow, various others. So, I mean, how did you find it working with, with traditional songs? Oh, I'm, I'm, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I like the more sort of wordy um, narrative nature of the lyrics. That's quite good, not just coming back to the same chorus every time. I suppose it's that thing of being respectful to the sort of spirit of the song. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and um, using the instrumentation to enhance it rather than trying to change it. Anything that was written on board one of these exploration ships would have just been an a cappella vocal thing. Yeah, we yeah. were using electric guitars and drums and things, but I think a lot of that was to create an atmosphere for the songs. And I suppose it's avoiding just feeling like the thing is some sort of exercise in historical reenactment. Yeah, that's a different type of project. So there is a creativity involved in what we've done that was fun. We recorded it in an empty church in Gravesend. So what was the significance of that? Well, the church in Gravesend, St Andrews, was a sailor's mission church. Mm -hmm. Lady Franklin was left in London. Franklin had disappeared. She was constantly trying to keep awareness of Franklin and what had happened to him alive and one of the things she did in that chapel in Gravesend she got the windows dedicated to all of the sailors in the final Franklin expedition so that church was partly a memorial to Franklin we were looking for somewhere which had some significance to the material which we were going to be playing so we decided we wanted to record it in there using the natural acoustics of that room which become kind of a character on the record and you well, we would, are, yeah. are well. a known specialist in <laughs> in incorporating the acoustics of rooms yes setting up studios in strange places i find recording in a, in a location is quite inspiring um especially one with a with a good acoustic where you can basically record the performance and the, the acoustic in one go the instrumentation is quite unusual evan and richard playing drums and guitar and Richard's usually playing electric guitar yeah. and then you played a selection of different instruments you? Um, so there was harmonium and concertina and a bit of banjo um, and the church organ pedals church organ pedals yeah the organ in the church had a fantastic low frequency and we recorded everything with room mics as well so any generally it was it was all uh, ensemble performance it was the occasional overdub the thing that was interesting about it was to get a performance of the three musicians performing and use your musicianship to get the balance within the room. I think it's interesting that approach of playing in the room with a live vocal that isn't going through a PA. Mm. Nobody has headphones on. It forces you to really keep the dynamics of everyone mm. totally in sync with what the vocal's doing because you have no option otherwise it disappears. Yes, I think I think the result you get from recording like that. We were very lucky in that the, the acoustic in the room sounded great and recorded really well. I think the key thing from recording that way is that you end up with a very uncluttered performance. So when you're mixing or when you're finishing the record, you can really make use of space in the recording, which which gives you a great sound. Leaving space to hear the instruments clearly and to hear the acoustic that is on those instruments is a joy. I'm very, very pleased with the result we've got from it. You hope the whole thing creates some kind of springboard for diving off into the this whole world of the Northwest Passage and the expeditions up there. And you know it it gives you this kind of trip through it. Yeah, and it creates a great atmosphere for these songs and builds it into something more than the, the song. That's but I, I think, you know, when you're playing the songs, you can almost just feel that weight. It just there sits is, quite heavily with what you're doing. It is a heavy story, yes. But a, but a, a good one. Oh, my children, heaven bless them. They were all the world to me. Would I could once more embrace them Ere I sink beneath the sea Was for them I crossed the ocean What my hopes I will not tell they